Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about something a little bit different. Today we are talking about the wetlands. Do you know what the wetlands are? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. In either case, I've written a little song to help us know what it means. It's to the tune of My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. And for this first part, I want to have you repeat after me. Are you ready? Let's go. The wetlands are not the ocean. Ready? The wetlands are not the ocean. The wetlands are not the sea. The wetlands are not the sea. The wetlands are not the dry ground. The wetlands are not the dry ground. Oh, what can the wetlands be? Oh, what can the wetlands be? For this next part, I want you to sing with me as we sing the area around where water meets ground. The area around where water meets ground. So the wetlands, they're not the water and they're not the dry ground. They're the place where the water and the dry ground meet. The area around where water meets ground. And then I'll give you some examples. The area around where water meets ground, like swamps, floodplains, marshes, and ponds, and bogs. Have you heard some of those words before? Swamp, marsh, floodplains, ponds, bogs. Maybe some of those are familiar. Then we're going to say the area around where water meets ground again, and I'm going to tell you some things that live there. The area around where water meets ground, home to plants, birds, fish, turtles, and frogs. Let's put it all together. The wetlands are not the ocean. The wetlands are not the sea. The wetlands are not the dry ground. Oh, what can the wetlands be? The area around where water meets ground, like swamps, floodplains, marshes, and ponds, and bogs. The area around where water meets ground, home to plants, birds, fish, turtles, and frogs. <laughs> That's kind of a mouthful, huh? <laughs> Great job, everyone. Our story for today is a book, and it's called Over and Under the Pond. Do you remember hearing pond on our list of things that can be wetlands? What do you see over the pond? I see a boy and his mother in a boat. And under the pond, what do you see? I see a fish. This book is by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Open up the cover and see what's on the end pages. What do you see? A lot of fish. Over and under the pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What do you think that shadow is? What's down there? I ask. Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles, loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Do you see that turtle number one? It's already underwater. You can still kind of see him. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. 
Listen close. Kukleri! Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Where's her nest? There it is. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. Um, do you know what that animal is? We don't have them around here, but maybe you've seen them before. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Keep eating, moose. Under the pond, and how about this one? You know what that animal is? You recognize that tail? Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. You see that bird ready to leave the nest? Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. What are those tadpoles growing into? Frogs. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still. A great blue do you know what kind of bird that is? A heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long legged step and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine Woodpecker wham! Digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. This kind of mussels? No, the kind that come in shells. The kind that we sometimes eat. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch, they catch minnows in monster-fast jaws. That larva caught a minnow. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. You see that crayfish? Looks like he's getting away from the raccoon who maybe wants to eat him for dinner. Over the pond we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond. The prowling catfish and drowsy turtles the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. The end. I hope you like that one. I sure do. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to tell you more about wetlands. Hey, Discovery Clubbers out there. Welcome to this week's edition of Discovery Club. Glad you can join us. Uh, we're going to be talking about wetlands today. Now, Miss Angela has already started us off with some story time, so hopefully you appreciate that. We definitely appreciate that, and thank you, Miss Angela, for that story time. Now we're going to talk a little more about wetlands. Now, did you know that Fort Worth Nature Center Refuge started based on or because of the wetlands? That's right. Just on both sides, or opposite sides of the nature center we have two lakes we have Eagle Mountain Lake and we have Lake Worth and those those lakes were constructed in order to protect this this watershed this area of water 
uh, so that there was no development building things up and so the water doesn't get uh, messed up it was set aside so that we can have this wonderful wetland aquatics rivers and ponds and streams around us so that we can enjoy them so that's what a wetland is just like you would imagine if i was asking you, what, what what do you think a wetland is yeah exactly you'd say it's an area with, that's wet right it's some wet land well it's a little more more complicated than that but that's essentially what it is it's an area that's filled with water in different ways whether it be uh rivers coming into it or it's a pond or a marsh a swamp all sorts of types of wetlands are out there now behind me i'm gonna kind of get out of the way this is one of our wetlands that we have here uh, it's our marsh area and as i look at it there are a couple of birds hanging out in there we talked about egrets and herons we talked about pelicans so all those animals are actually hanging out those birds are hanging out in this type of uh, habitat we'll talk a little bit more about them but when we did say what a wetland is now let's talk about what the what the purpose of a wetland is they're very very important right behind me this wetland here serves as a nursery it's like a hospital uh, the the newborn division or section of a hospital it's like a nursery you think about a nursery at a hospital it's a lot of babies being born and they're being taken care of well this is kind of like a nursery in a sense too because a lot of baby uh, forms of wildlife or young forms of wildlife start here and we've talked about it when we talked about rivers where a lot of our dragonflies uh, they started here in the water here they start as, uh, as egg they hatch and become nymphs then they grow up and become full-grown dragonflies so it's a nursery uh, we have shrimp in there we have all sorts of wildlife hanging out inside of that or underneath that water. Fish, tadpoles, before they're frogs they had to start as tadpoles. So uh, it's a nursery. Uh, this is also an important habitat for other forms of wildlife like birds. Birds like to use this, uh, this wetland here to catch fish, which we're going to talk about uh, later on in the Discovery Club uh, down the road. But they like to catch fish. So this area here is very important because they can catch their fish. So it's important for wildlife. Uh, plants, it's important for plants. Plants actually, if you look uh, behind me, you'll see lots of different types of plants out there. And those plants that are here in this wetland, they do extremely well when they're underneath water. They're submerged underwater. They thrive, they do well, they need that water. So we have plant life. So we have some plants that rely on the wetlands. We have wildlife that rely on the wetlands as well as the young wildlife that start there too. That's a lot of wildlife, right? So this is an important habitat for lots of types of animals, lots of types of plants. But it's also important for us too. You come out to the nature center, you can actually put your, your canoe, your kayak into the river, not right, not right here behind me, that's our marsh area, that's off limits for boating, but into the river and you can go into all the sorts of wetlands that we have around our area so it's important to us as uh, humans too because we get to recreate we get to enjoy uh, the paddling and the access to the water whether we want to go fishing now if you come fishing here at the nature center remember you cannot fish from the bank you have to be in the water in a canoe or a kayak and so forth to fish so this wetland or all the wetlands we have at the nature center are important for wildlife plants but also us so we can enjoy them and if, I, if you're like me, you love being near the water. There's lots of cool things near the water. So we talked about what a wetland is. We have wetlands all over the, the nature center. This is a really cool one right here. Uh, we talked about uh, the purpose of wetlands as far as uh, having homes for wildlife, plant life, and then for us as humans to recreate. So wetlands are very, very important. Now, what forms of wildlife do you suppose you'd find at a wetland? Can you tell me some animals that you would find at a wetland go ahead go ahead and say it think about it and say it yeah I bet a lot of y'all were talking about the aquatic birds uh, frogs and snakes turtles oh I love turtles turtles uh, maybe you have a little wetland near your your house you can see ducks hanging out there so there's lots of different types of wildlife and it's important to have all these different types of wildlife and animals so they can interact with each other. You don't want to have just one type of animal. And our wetlands allow for different types of plants so that certain animals 
eat and hide and utilize those certain types of plants. So that's very important to have all the, the plant life as well. So if you come out to the nature, you can paddle and canoe and kayak and just spend time in, uh, in the water, near the water, enjoying the, the beautiful fall weather that we have, uh, have before us. So that's what a wetland is. Uh, we talked about the purpose of the wetland, we talked about some wildlife, uh, and then of course we have lots of trees. All these trees you have near here, uh, you see behind me, they're along and surrounding that wetland. Those trees are actually used to all those high amounts of water. The soil that's be below them, it loves the water. And those, those trees, they just put their roots down in there and they go <sighs> slurp up all that water and they actually uh, allows them to live and thrive and they can be inundated in water. In fact, the water that's coming from the wetlands, you have maybe have some rivers and some streams that are connected to the wetlands. As they are, they're moving through, there's nutrients inside of that water that as they go into the riparian area, can you say riparian? Riparian. That's the area that's on each side of a wetland or a river or so forth uh, that has trees and plant life. Well, as that water from the river and the ponds and that wetland get onto land where those plants are, it actually gives them nutrients. Think about you taking your vitamins. I know my kids in the morning, they're always in a mad dash to take their vitamins. Well, it's kind of like that too. It, it helps nourish those trees and those plants uh, being right on the edge of a wetland. So that's a pretty cool, uh, cool uh, benefit from those plants being right by a wetland. So uh, that concludes our kind of talking points for our, our wetland discussion. Uh, what I want to do is uh, show you a couple of slides and some pictures of uh, some different types of wetlands as well as some animals that you would find uh, in and around wetland and maybe even some plants that you find like trees and so forth. So uh, stay tuned, check out this slideshow and uh, enjoy these photos. So as you can see, there's lots of different types of wetlands uh, and animals that frequent wetlands and do a, do a really good job uh, in the wetland area to improve it and to sustain it and to maintain it and make sure it's healthy. So that's really cool. So those animals play a major role. Those plants play a major role. Um, think about those trees. As I said, they pit those roots down in the water and it holds all that, those, that soil together. And I didn't talk about that in our lesson time. Uh, I just my mind is going everywhere right now but yes those trees are very important because it keeps all that soil together so that when the, the wetlands and the water is moving the soil doesn't leave and if the soil leaves so does the tree if the tree leaves then you lose the, the, the animals like birds and so forth that may use those, use those trees and if you lose certain birds they may have certain roles in that habitat and now they're no longer there anymore or a job to do and they're no longer there to do that job so as you can see everything is connected and that's a, that's the one thing i want you to always remember and to retain during these discovery clubs is that everything is connected the plants the animals the soil everything's connected and you play a major role in making sure that all those pieces stay together by being good stewards you know not littering not polluting uh, recycling um, turning your water off when you're, you're brushing your teeth and all sorts of things you can uh, help uh, maintain and help protect all our wetlands so uh, that was a long conclusion added a little lesson in there as well but that's okay right we're all friends here so again, 
the point of Discovery Club is to know that everything's connected and that you play a major part in, in the, all those connections, whether it be a positive impact and a negative impact. And we do not want to do anything negatively uh, to impact, uh, to have a negative impact on our, our habitats like the water and pollutant and so forth. We want to be positive and do our best to uh, help maintain it. So uh, thanks again for joining in and watching this, this, uh, this session about wetlands. I encourage you to come out to the Fort Worth Nature Center, come over here by the water, just listen to the water, watch the animals in the water, watch the plants go swaying as the wind is blowing, enjoy it. It's a really peaceful place, so come out to the Nature Center, enjoy the wetlands we have. So until we meet again, I hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you next week on Discovery Club. Bye-bye, guys.